Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We now return to our regularly scheduled colony in progress. This is episode four of my Alpha 45 playthrough. Uh, we've I've skipped ahead a little, tiny little bit in time uh, from the end of our last previous episode. Uh, first thing I did notice, I'm going to have to do some uh, work crew reorganization. So I know that doesn't sound very exciting to hear me just say it. Uh, I'm going to have to do some shuffling of uh, personnel. So I did get a couple of extra overseers in the ensuing couple of days. And one thing I will note is that I had our good friend Yaroslav Frichinkovsky here. He was a farmer, but I am going to assign him to work in the ceramics workshop. So uh, he doesn't have to grub in the fields anymore. He can make bricks instead. Uh, first, I will have to unassign him from farms. Okay. Next, I assign him to the kiln here. But that means there's no uh, there's no crew on that field. So the next thing I do is I look for another unoccupied crew. Uh, now I was going to put Felix Brazenson on farming duty, but I do notice his best skill is actually carpentry, which means we would actually be well served having him work in our wood shop. However, that is currently occupied by Hattie Kilner. So I'm going to unassign Hattie Kilner and assign Felix Brazenson here. Okay, that still leaves us the matter of the farm. Uh, let's see, Hattie Kilner is now unassigned, so I will assign Hattie Kilner here. I think that's everyone taken care of. Okay, ceramics workshop, carpentry, kitchen. Oh, and another thing I've done, our NCO, Bren Griff. Now, um, if you look for my previous playthroughs, the mortality rate for the NCOs in the early game is very, very high. So uh, what I've done is I've actually taken a, a random worker off a different crew and put him in the military. So Brand Griff is not alone. And then I assigned him to our barracks here with the nice red walls. And I've started on building gabions here, these little wooden palisades. And hopefully Brand Griff doesn't die in the first sign of hostilities. We see a little bit of blood spatter here and there, and that's because I was actually raided by a small body of raiders early on. But we repelled them, and actually we've taken to burying their corpses in the graveyard. So, life in the colony continues. Now if we take a look at the uh, chili plantation here, it has been... Um, it's been producing chilies, which we've been cooking into food. Uh, but even, even though they've been planting it, at most, at most, it's only ever had, say, about seven plants simultaneously. And that's because chilies are a high uh, labor plant. They have to be tended to like several times a day or they wither and die, compared to something like maize, which needs to be tended maybe once or twice a day. Uh, which means the farmers are busy and they don't have enough time to support more plants. So what happens is, even though chilies grow really fast, you can't grow a lot of plants simultaneously. Now I'd like to switch this uh, plot over to corn as soon as possible, but first I'm, I'm going to need to stockpile a bit more food, because right now we're practically starving. Which um, which is kind of a uh, self-reinforcing problem. Uh, among other things, well, okay, I'll get back to that. Uh, this other field here, the flax, remember how I didn't build any beds and everyone is sleeping on the floor and they're going to be very grumpy tomorrow morning? That's because I didn't have any cots. I didn't have any cloth to build cots. So I grew some flax here and actually the flax harvest has come in. I've got a bunch of flax. Because I've got 13 uh, bundles of bundles of flax, of flax straw, uh, that means I will be able to build 13... Uh, with the aid of a textile mill, I'll be able to build 13 bolts of cloth with which to build 13 beds. So I think that's all the flax I'll need for now. So I'm actually going to take this crew, Leopold Thatchlock. I'm actually going to ask them to stop farming this field. In fact, I'm just going to stop farming here entirely. Now it does kill the plants that were in progress, but that's fine. 
that means Leopold Thatchlock's work crew will be free to just pick up uh, spontaneous jobs as the need arises. And I've got reports of a hostile fishman. Oh dear. Oh, that's uh, unfortunate. Let's uh, first of all. New. No. Well, uh, Leopold Thatchlock's retirement didn't last long. Uh oh. Brand Griff, no! This is exactly what I didn't want happening. Okay, first of all, Leopold Thatchlock, uh, he had one worker under him who is now uncontrolled because his, in, uh, his overseer is dead. So I'm going to assume that one random guy to the militia. Unfortunately, we have no weapons. Yeah, they're going to have a hard time fighting back. Brand Griff! No! No! Oh dear, that's, that's a lot of fishmen. No! Oh, no oh my. Well, I'm sorry, Brain Griff. You did your best. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, look at that, they're hostile fishmen. Uh, the barracks, this is the alert telling me that the barracks is now without an overseer. And the militia is without an overseer. All right, time for some emergency reorganization. So I've got two people who are formerly militia under the overseer who are now dead. I'm going to assign them to an overseer and I'm going to assign that overseer to the barracks and we'll try to fight back. Uh, let's see, Dark Ken's Sander is, isn't doing anything right now. All right, Dark Ken's Sander. Uh, actually, one of you guys should probably go work here. Dark Ken's Sander, you are now my NCO. Hope you acquit yourself well. Well, at least the burial jobs are. Oh, dear, someone else has died. Felix Brazenson. Oh, no. Uh, where was Felix Brazenson assigned? Was he assigned to my... Uh, oh, no, he was our new carpenter, wasn't he? Well, when this pa crisis passes, maybe I'll have to find a new carpenter. And some crops are spoiling in the field because they haven't been tended in a timely fashion. Well, it looks like we're going to have uh, starvation problems on top of all the murder and mayhem. Oh, Brand Griff, we hardly knew ye. Oh, still fighting going on in the outskirts. Okay. Oops. First of all, I have enough prestige to call in an emergency squad of redcoats. I'm definitely doing that. Had I not needed to call in the emergency military, I would actually have used that favor for food because we are also on the brink of starvation. That's okay. Uh, I think we need to, in order to eat, uh, we need first to be alive. Okay, Darken Sender, who our new military NCO, uh, has been intimidating fish people. I, uh, that's a good idea, actually. I'm going to order a policy of hostility since the fish people decided to kill uh, kill our colonists. Oh, look, two workers. Here's a fish person corpse. Well, I would not ordinarily want people eating fish people meat, but um, as you can see, we're very short on food. Ah, but Yaroslav made it, okay. Although he's idle, didn't I assign you to make bricks? Oh. I signed you to the ceramics workshop, but did not order any bricks. We do, however, have lots of clay. There's a fair amount of clay. So I'm going to say I want to maintain a, a level, a minimum level of five clay at all times. And as soon as he's done tidying shop, maybe he'll get around to making those bricks. Oh, except he's got all his job filters toggled off. Oh, Dark End Sender is quite insane. Three of five insane. K 
killing things and seeing dead things has made her upset. Well, I guess we can't blame her. Maybe somebody should bury Brain Griff's body. Uh, maybe. Huh. Well, I can't select his corpse. I hope it doesn't just rot there. Um, and not just because, uh, not just because we knew him, but because uh, a corpse that is left for longer than a day will start generating vermin. So. You know, that's not good for us. All right. Oh, the kitchen's not... No, the carpentry's not staffed anymore, is it? Because the head carpenter died. The person who was best, uh, was best qualified to saw wood. Okay. Well, uh, Hydunia Stalvern, you are now our head carpenter. Uh, you probably don't need more than one person in here. Speaking of Hydunia, let's see how she's doing. Oh, she took quite a few injuries during the fish person attack. Um, let's let's see her log here. She hasn't slept recently. She's irritable. She did pray and felt better about it, but she had to sleep on the floor, and then she was. Not happy at seeing the corpses of Leopold Thatchlock. So her primary emotion is fear, and she is moderately mad. And there goes the autosave. Oh, I see I still have some of two people who are not assigned to cruise. So we'll just wait for the autosave here. Unfortunately, I think we got the emergency... Uh, allotment of redcoats a little bit too late. The fishmen had left by the time they arrived. Unfortunately, that's you can't control when the trigger, uh, when the favor request triggers, uh, which is something I personally like to say. Wow, what is going on? These soldiers are extremely mad. Flee from imagined horror? What? Oh, that's why. They're horrified that Ishmael Solderburn and Fanny Pendlelock ate human flesh. What? These are some of our permanent cult. Oh my goodness, she is very mad indeed. She's at maximum madness. Huh. Oh. And remember we promised the colonists a chapel? Previous episode? They're actually upset that I haven't built them a chapel yet, even though I promised them one. Well, I could, I guess I could kill the colonists who are complaining, but I, I sincerely do intend to build a chapel. So I'm going to promise them next time for sure I will actually build a chapel. But before I do that... So these are our temporary loner soldiers, right? The ones we got on a favor. So they go back to the Empire after three days. So I don't care if they don't sleep or eat. So you guys get no time off to sleep. Uh, because I want you guys ready to protect the colony at all times. You can sleep, you know, when you fly back across the ocean. That said, I've still got two workers. So I'm just going to assign some of you guys. First of all, why is Hattie Kilner? One of you guys here, one of you guys here, and there we go. A bit of a rough patch, but I think we're okay now. Now, we're still very short on food. Some people are less hungry than others uh, because they eat human flesh. Now they've got the materials. I'm actually going to build an airship mast out here so that uh, air crates, para crates, don't bean my colonists. Uh, sweet coconuts. Oh, I don't have a crew farming this field. Oh, I do, actually. Hattie Kilner. That's right. That's why all your filters were off. Okay. Hydunia Stalvern. These filters are inappropriate for... The carpenter doesn't really need to be producing wood all the time. So when the crew's not 
sawing up logs, I think it's appropriate that the carpenter crew is allowed to do other things like hauling. Pliluic Milchok. Now, because the kitchen is vital and you need to produce food as soon as you're able, uh, personally, I like to turn off all the other uh, job allotments for the kitchen crew. So they focus on cooking to the exclusion of everything else. I'm going to enable hunting on both of the military crews here. Oh, what is this? See that alert in the bottom right? Hydunia Stalver has changed the name of their workshop to the Unpatriotic Whaling Machines. Right, that's now the name of the carpentry. That's because Hydunia is extremely insane, and this is reflected in their workshop. If I could select her, and she's not even fully mad. She's just insane enough. So when places are controlled by overseers who are mad, or cultists, or otherwise crazy, they will change names of their workshops to reflect this. Now, it used to be, and I don't know if it was maybe just temporarily removed, uh, every workshop had its own name. And if your overseer was sane, uh, you would just have a regular, happy, sort of vaguely British sounding name, like the, the Temperate Copper Pipes or whatever. Uh, Non-culty buildings no longer have their own names. Uh, they used to have it, and then now they don't. Uh, I, I, don't I don't know why that was removed, which is unfortunate. So we've weathered the we've weathered the storm, although we lost Brand Griff. Uh, we still have Yaroslav, President Kowski, Kowski, Kowska, I believe. Uh, we have a number of extremely insane soldiers, but that's okay. They're leaving soon, or maybe in a couple of days. Now that I've got bricks, oh yes, I was going to build a chapel. I can't build a... Yes, I can. Do I want to build a chapel? I kind of want to see what happens when people get extremely insane. You know what? I'm going to build a barber shop instead. People are also very injured. And before I worry about their sanity, I need to worry about them staying alive. So the barber shop is an office where people with injuries can go to have them... Uh, tended to. Oh, and one more thing before, uh, every every barber shop needs a chair, of course. And a barber shop pole. One thing I've been meaning to get to, the decor system. So these are buildings, uh, and the decor system is new to, or its implementation is new to this revision and uh, actually the experimental versions just prior to this. Every building has a workshop quality value between negative six to positive six with a default of zero. Zero represents a building with that does not affect the mood of the people in it uh, one way or another. As you add modules, that is uh, like ovens, ovens in the kitchen or these workbenches in the carpentry, each of those modules reduces the quality by one. So the more modules you stick in there, and if we look at, uh, for instance, the ceramics workshop, it's it's got a work, uh, quality value of negative three because it's got three modules in there, right? And that makes people who work in there, it tends to make them unhappy. They don't like it. However, we can increase the quality value by putting in decorative modules which serve no functional purpose, but make it a nicer place to look at and to live and work. And the higher the quality value, the better the influence on a colonist's mood. So they'll be less grouchy, uh, and they'll be more content, and Fanny Pendelock is slowly going insane. So that's what I'll do. Uh, people are in and out of the kitchen quite a lot, for instance. And uh, so I'm going to stick on some, why are people running? Oh. Ha! Huh. We're ready for you now, fish jerks. Oh my goodness, that was that was a well-thrown grenade. Oh, I hope Plithywick Milchok 
runs back to uh, back into town. By the way, we're going to butcher you for meat. Oh, and the colonists are still bugging me about that chapel. They're still complaining about the chapel. Oh, Hydunia Stalvern is leading the leading the complaints. Well, I'll build you a chapel tomorrow, maybe. Uh, yes, as I was saying, decor. So people are in and out of the kitchen all the time, for instance. Uh, so it might be beneficial to me to gussy it up. For instance, I'll stick on a window here and a spice rack that seems appropriate for a kitchen. And each of those should add one to the quality of the kitchen, which should bring the quality, if, when those are built, it should bring the quality back up to zero. So it should, it should have a net, it should not have a net influence on the uh, happiness of the laborers inside. Philomena Steellock, how did you die? Died due to incomprehensible eldritch energies? What the heck was that? Uh, she was one of our extremely insane lone soldiers, right? I really don't... It's unfortunate. I don't know exactly what happened to her. That's okay. So our colony is uh, slowly sinking into madness. Oh, look at that. Darken Sander has changed the name of the workshop. Which workshop is that? To the fetid, fetid meat grinder? Unpatriotic whaling machines? Oh, Dark Hand Sander, my new NCO. The barracks is now known as the Fetid Meat Grinder. Oh, oh good. There's a herd of hang giant hungry beetles on the way in. But we've got a lot of soldiers, so hopefully, hopefully they'll be able to take care of the beetles. And in fact, that might be a net gain in food because <clears throat> the chili crop is uh, not very productive but soon we'll have lots of beetle meat, uh, hopefully. So in the interest of keeping this episode relatively short, I'm gonna cut this off here. Uh, we lost one of our custom colonists, sad to say. Bran Griff, you will be missed. I think they actually, uh, here is your tombstone, yeah, the icon of the Holy Cog. And uh, thanks very much for watching this one. This was episode four. My name is Alfred. The game is Clockwork Empires. It's a game in early access, uh, still in development. As you can see, uh, this this game has taken a turn for the morbid in this particular instance. Uh, great, tune in next episode uh, to see how we handle the ravenous herd of giant beetles. Have a good one. <laughs>